I'm not someone you'd think would be a critic of higher education. I mean, after all, I've consumed rather a lot of it. I have a PhD in the evaluation of education from Berkeley. I've also been kind of a part of the system. I've taught at four universities, including Berkeley, and written three books on higher ed, none unduly critical of it. And I've been a consultant to 15 college presidents. But as the decades have gone by, and I've learned more and more about what goes on behind the Ivy, I've become convinced that higher education is America's most overrated product. And now, especially in the coming years, I believe that many fewer students should be going to college. I mean, I, college really does still, it remains a wise choice for some people, like uh, young people who enjoy academic learning, uh, people who dream of a career as a researcher, or uh, those who want a career that clearly requires college, like a doctor or a lawyer. And unless you're burning to start a business, maybe run it full-time, and uh, you probably should go to a Harvard or Stanford, or maybe one of those free spirits who craves being an autodidact, you know, teaching yourself, you probably, if you can get into a Harvard or a Stanford, it probably makes sense to go. We do live in a society that values designer labels. But the quantitative data, the empirical experience that I've had over my lifetime suggests that many people who currently attend college or graduate school or considering attending college or graduate school should think three times. Most notable example are the 200,000 students a year that the so-called four-year colleges admit who graduated in the bottom 40 percent of their high school class, worse than the bottom half of their high school class. Those colleges, and they're nearly all colleges, fail to inform those prospective students that, and this is according to the U.S. Department of Education, the odds of such students graduating is three to one against, and here's the punchline, even if they're given eight and a half years. It's enormous cost, an enormous time, an enormous opportunity cost. What they, those students could otherwise be doing with their time, an apprenticeship, a military, on-the-job training, for example, at the elbow of a successful and ethical small business owner. Now, I, you know, I want to be fair. Averages can be misleading. So if you're someone who did poorly in high school, but you're confident you can turn it around in college, even though the work is harder, and you're un and if you believe you're unlikely to be distracted by the you know the sex, drug, and rock and roll environment that occurs in many dorms, because after all, it's kids first time away from home, then there isn't much risk in trying college for a semester, especially at a community college. By the way, community colleges are ironically probably higher education's best not only. Tr deal, but it's really a hidden treasure. They're not only cheapest, but on average you're going to get the best teaching, because faculty is hired and promoted largely based on how well they can teach, not at, like at universities where the more prestigious the university, they hire mainly on or how much research dollars they can bring in. Um, I want to talk a little bit about college as a business and not as a the beneficent nonprofit we think it is. Colleges have mammothly powerful marketing machines, lobbying machines, marketing machines. I'm just going to give you one example just for interest of time, but I could talk about this forever. Colleges have so successfully marketed the myth that college graduates earn a million dollars more over the years, over their lifetime. That is so misleading. I'm going to go at the risk of being in, getting into the weeds. I want to lay this out so you understand. That statistic, first of all, is retrospective. In decades past, having a degree was rare, and so it commanded more in the marketplace. But now, with 70% of high school graduates going to college, 70%, think about that, you know, the other 30 are like very disabled special ed kids, etc. With 70, nearly every able-bodied student, anybody with a normal, you know, anyway, uh, so many kids go to college, a degree is not going to differentiate yourself much in the marketplace. You want to get an education edge on top of the six figures that most students end up paying to get a bachelor's degree, you're going to need a graduate degree, to which is going to cost another fortune. So as you're calculating the cost of, and, and don't forget, when you're calculating the cost of college and graduate school, you can't forget to add what the amount of money you could be earning and what you could be learning if you are not learning the academic abstract stuff in college, but if you are learning in the real world. That's the retrospective argument of why, looking back, it doesn't make sense that their statistic that a million, you know, you earn a million dollars over your lifetime is worth it. But prospectively, as we move forward, Unless you're a star in some high demand field like, oh, computer engineering, but uh, not in sociology, psychology, gender studies, etc., the demand for college graduates is likely to continue to decline as ever more of those expensive to hire white collar jobs, and by the way, get more expensive every day with Obamacare, paid family leave is on the way, um, 
companies are quietly offshoring ever more jobs. They're automating ever more jobs. They're part-timing ever more jobs. They're temping ever more jobs. So you can't prospectively look back to the past and say, oh, you're going to earn a million dollars more. And don't fall for the college perpetrated myth that the information, we live in an information economy, they tell you. So we're going to need millions more knowledge workers. In truth, only a relatively few of those knowledge workers are needed to create and innovate. Far more of the work that needs to get done can be offshored or automated. You remember also the Asian economies are aware that they've had a relative innovation gap and they're working on it at their colleges and universities. Now, at the same time, as those white collar jobs are going to be declining, because of this everyone to college movement that we're in, there's a relative shortage of skilled workers, dye makers, welders, the jobs they don't prepare you for in the so-called four-year universities. I call them so-called because most students, if they graduate at all, take five or six. Especially with America's structural problems, and, and though discussion of those is beyond the scope of this talk, um, it may well be that the people who are going to thrive in the life in which you're going to live in and mature in, grow old in, are going to disproportionately be self-employed. And the most important skill that colleges don't teach or certainly don't emphasize is entrepreneurialism, self-employment. So if you think you might have the potential and the interest in becoming an entrepreneur, and you're not that motivated to do academic learning in college, you, you might want to at least think about foregoing college and perhaps talking your way into an apprenticeship at the elbow of a successful and an ethical entrepreneur. Another reason that the statistics that you're going to earn a million bucks over more over your lifetime with a college degree is so misleading is that the pool of students who go to college and graduate school is very different from the pool that doesn't. Those, that pool is brighter, they're more motivated, they're better connected. You could lock the college bound or the graduate school bound in a closet for four or five or six years and they're going to earn much more over their lifetime than the non-college bound. So it's not really the college is adding the value, it's that they're brighter and more motivated to begin with. So in sum, should you really fall for the college's marketing crap, not just about the million dollars more you're going to earn over your lifetime, but so much more that they, they try to perpetrate in their view books, their websites, their campus tour guides, the whole marketing machine, which unfortunately is too often parroted by the media too unquestioningly. Now, I can imagine that a lot of you are thinking, hey, college is not just about getting a job. And you're right. It shouldn't be. The problem is that study after study after study are showing unimaginably poor value added in reasoning, writing, critical thinking, and so on. Recently released study, probably the most recent, January 2011, at a University of Chicago Press, it's called Academically Adrift. And it found that more than one-third of students, I think 36%, grew less than one point on a hundred-point scale in reasoning, writing, critical thinking skills, catch this, in the four years from freshman to senior year, less than one point out of a hundred. And that, of course, excludes the weaker students who would have already dropped out. So terribly little value added in the reading, writing, critical thinking skills. But when you stop to think about it, it's not surprising. Because universities are a business, and they consider students a cost center rather than research, which is a profit center. So they educate students as cheaply as they can possibly get away with it. Get, get away with. So they hire professors who are great at doing research, but are terrible teachers. For example, there are some foreign professors they're eager to hire because they're great researchers, don't even speak good English. And yet, universities care so little about students, they will set them loose on students learning hard, having to learn hard stuff like chemistry and computer science and, uh, and, and calculus. And in all PhD programs, they're, you know, they, they're, I have one of them, and, and I've spoken of, of course, many PhDs, they do almost no training on how to be a good teacher. So when those universities are hiring PhDs, they're not hiring because they care about you, the student. And do remember that professors are people who focus their life on arcana. That's detailed esoterica. Though that's Grand Canyons away from what undergraduates need to know. So those professors, on average, are not going to spend much time or have great expertise teaching the reasoning skills, the writing skills, the critical thinking skills, the public speaking skills that regular human beings need to know. But they will disproportionately spend time teaching their esoterica that those professors are interested in. The hermeneutics of Wittgenstein, or the theories or vagaries of how molecules are involved in the expression of genetic proteins. Speaking of PhDs, the Rand Corporation, a nonprofit think tank, two decades ago had already identified a gross oversupply of PhDs, even in vaunted fields like molecular biology, 
Well, there have been a lot more recent studies, and they have found that the oversupply is even greater now. And yet colleges, which I continue to repeat, are businesses, not the beneficent nonprofits they claim to be, are unconscionable. They continue to admit more and more graduate students without regard to their employability after the students give so much time in, of, of themselves in money and in time and the opportunity cost. Such a shame. They, why do they do it? They want to admit doctoral students not just for the tuition, but so they can have research slaves for the professors. And law schools, are, believe me, are not exempt either. Barbara Boxer, the senator from California, recently excoriated the law schools for reporting fraudulent data on the employability of their graduates. For example, there was one law school that admitted hiring some of its graduates temporarily for a few bucks an hour so that the law school could claim that 90% of their graduates employed are employed. And of course, the prospective students assume that the, when you're a prospective student, you assume the 90% refers to the percentage you're hired as lawyers. They couldn't imagine that law schools who stress ethics in every course could be so blatantly unethical, let, let alone downright dishonest. Now, I'm not telling you to not go to college or graduate school. I just want you to be conscious. I want you to exercise conscious choice. One size does not fit all. It varies with the person. And there are many paths to the life well led. So I implore you to ask yourself whether you'd be wiser to spend the fortune, the years in the university, or would you be wiser to spend it in an apprenticeship, learning on the job, or a short-term career training program at a community college. Some of them are great. We're in, God forbid we're allowed to say this, in the military. Because the, the military does provide a lot of good quality job training for well-paying careers that are in demand. Or as I said earlier, briefly, I want to stress this, sometimes learning on the job can be very valuable if you take the time to find somebody who is not only a master at what they do, but has the kind soul to be wanting to mentor somebody like you. Like, and I, I really do think that some of the wisest things you could do is to work at the elbow of an ethical and successful entrepreneur. Um, I want one more plug before I get to the end here. Special plug again for community colleges. It's very rare in life that the least expensive option is the best, but community colleges are on average. They offer the best instruction because faculty is hired and promoted based on how well they teach mainly. And don't overrate the value of the traditional college dorm experience that the college, the universities like to promote. Too often, let's just say it's not the most wonderful environment and the development of the meaningful lifetime friendships that colleges assert it is. So to sum up, I urge you to think three times before you just follow the herd and go to college or graduate school. And if you, but if you are considering college, I do urge you to ask these questions of the admissions people. Here are my, let's say this is for an undergraduate, here are my high school grades and test scores. Of similar students, what percentage do graduate in four years? What percentage in five years? What percentage in six years? How much do students with my background grow in reasoning, writing, critical thinking? And ask about financial aid. Most colleges, yes, most colleges, except predominantly for low, low cost community colleges, they hide how much the college actually costs. It's very hard to find, even on college websites, what even one year costs, let alone the full costs with all the add-ons, and there are plenty, of four years, five years, six years, given your family's income and assets. Ask about employability. If I made you say in journalism or in music or even in nursing, what is the probability that if, if I graduate, if I'm one of the 45% who do graduate in six years, uh, I'll be professionally employed within a year of graduation. Also ask for the results of the most recent student satisfaction survey done at the college. And finally ask to see at least a summary of the visiting team accreditation report. That'll give you an idea of what professional evaluators think of the college. Ask those questions. I wish you wouldn't have to ask those questions. One of my greatest wishes is that, that the government would mandate that each college prominently post a college report card with that information on their website. After all, government mandates full disclosure about less important items. Every tire has to mold into its sidewall, its tread life, its temperature, its traction ratings. Every prescription drug has to include an insert uh, listing even its rare side effects. Even food packages have labels that list how much calcium, how much vitamin A, and so on. Shouldn't we require colleges to issue an audited report card on itself? After all, higher ed is the largest purchase that most people make. Today, it can cost even more than a house with the collapse of housing prices. Should we not require colleges to issue a college report card on themselves, ordered from the outside, so you can figure out whether college is right for you, graduate school, and help you decide if there might be a wiser use of your money and time? Remember, the evidence is clear that so many students currently struggling with or having dropped out of college would have been far wiser to choose a different path. May you look to find the right path with open eyes. 
Um, more of my stuff at martynemco.com, M-A-R-T-Y-N-E-M-K-O.com. I've written a lot about it. Hope that's